Hey guys, it's Javad. It's uh, New Year 2020. And uh, I hope you guys got to see the Sorrells project. That was my last video introducing that. It's been um, a couple weeks since I posted the finale on that. If you didn't see it, go check it out on the DIY project pad on Facebook. Uh, under the, if you go to the page and under the announcements section, you'll see all the posts and the, the finale post, which also lists all the build update posts as well. Um, so the next project uh, I'm getting started on, and um, this is a follow-up project for Jeff Bagby and I. Uh, many of you hopefully saw or remember the Helios build that we did last year. The Helios was a design that Jeff came up with and a build that uh, I did. And uh, then Jeff and I um, presented it at Expona in the SB Acoustics room there in Schaumburg, Illinois. And um, it was a really great project. It got a lot of good attention, uh, very well received by you guys, the community, everyone that heard it um, really had great things to say about it. The, uh, the only negative is it was not a cheap speaker. Um, I think even if you wanted to build it, you'd probably be looking at you know, three grand or something uh, with the beryllium tweeter and uh, whatever waveguide and <clears throat> the um, the W024 Satori woofer, you know, all really nice world-class components. And um, it's just, you know, out of a lot of people's budget. So Jeff and I started talking about uh, what could we do to, to offer that format speaker for people to build in a cheaper, uh, at a cheaper price point. And so after throwing around some, some ideas, we came up with a design that uses uh, an SB29 tweeter. So not a Satori tweeter, but an SB Acoustics tweeter. It's a much cheaper tweeter, still an excellent world-class tweeter, and an 8-inch NRX SB Acoustics woofer. Uh, also a world-class driver, excellent quality, but these components are much, much cheaper and um, more accessible to the common man. And so that's what, we're, that's what we decided to call this speaker is it's called the Helios Common Man. And um, it's designed to give the same, you know, kind of acoustic format, uh, the same kind of architecture as the Helios speaker, but with uh, less expensive drivers with, you know, roughly um, comparable performance that, uh, gives that format of a, an eight inch or nine inch driver uh, crossing over to a wave guided tweeter. Um, and uh, also with the same type of passive radiator base alignment uh, on the side of the enclosure. So I uh, wanted to kind of dig in a little bit and show you guys what's been going on. I've already started this project. So unlike uh, a lot of intros uh, where I'm just showing you raw materials, I'm I'd say in the middle of it right now. Um, Holidays and Christmas and New Year's were kind of busy, but uh, I've been getting some work done on it. And uh, so I always like to do kind of fun little themes on these builds. And uh, <clears throat> so two years ago, um, we went to a cabin in, in Tahoe, California, actually Truckee, California. M me and my family, we go every winter and we rent a cabin and let the kids play in the snow and we drink uh, hot cocoa and uh, eat pizza and stuff. So um, uh, this cabin had a, a, a wood burning stove. And so I, I, you know, I, you guys, if you know anything about me, you know, I love wood. And so I was out pulling lumber and firewood, uh, to put in the, in the wood burning stove. And I came across a, a log that had the most beautiful figuring and uh, flex like Oak, uh, kind of the mission style Oak, um, has, and um, and I could I could instantly tell just from looking at this uh, split lumber that it was beautiful wood inside. So I went through the whole stack of firewood and I found all the pieces from this one tree and I pulled them all out. And it was about 20, uh, 20 pieces of you know uh, firewood, um, and they were they looked like the logs had been quartered. So they had a dimension of about you know five to six inches. Um, 
you know, pie slices with 90 degree um, chops. So imagine you took a, like a 12 or 13 inch log and you quartered it with an ax. <clears throat> That's what I started with. And uh, I don't have it left. I have some pictures that I'll post, but you can imagine this is, this is the log and this is the face of the log, you know, where it was split. But you can see already, this is the split surface. You can see these flecks and this beautiful, you know, the heartwood uh, color contrast. And after you cut it, this, this figuring and character really comes out. So I couldn't resist. And so I, I loaded up the back of our minivan with all of these logs. And it was, it, it was you know, it was roughly dry, but the wood wasn't 100% uh, dry how I would normally want. So I let the wood sit for two years outside um, in a covered area to really dry through 100%. So when I was thinking about this project, um, you know, what's, what, what would be more common man than building a speaker from firewood? Um, and granted, the whole speaker is not built with firewood, but this is um, wood that was going to be burned to provide heat. And now, um, you know, we're going to build a speaker out of it. So, so what I did is I, I ran these logs uh, on my bandsaw and I resawed them. And, uh, you know, I set up my fence here. And I resawed them to one inch thick pieces. And then I re resawed those pieces into approximately half inch thick pieces. So I ended up with a bunch of pieces like this. So this is approximately three eighths of an inch thick. And I ended up with a lot of pieces like this, which weren't very usable. You can see this is just a crotch piece. But still really beautiful wood inside. And so I, <clears throat> I, I took that and I cut it all up and I ended up with pieces like this. And so these are about one and three quarter inch wide. They're all about a quarter inch to three eighths inch thick. And a lot of them have little splits and, you know, knots and things like that. But all the pieces are exactly the same width. And see, this piece could be used, but this area can be filled with epoxy, which is what I did a little bit. But I, I went through, these are the pieces I've left over right here. And what I, what I did was I took these pieces and I laminated and glued them onto a piece of Baltic birch. And so both sides of the Helios Common Man will be this, this wood that I cut down from, from fire uh, hardwood lumber. And I, and I believe this is all oak wood. It's like a white oak. So these are the side panels. And these are the finished side panels. There's two. You can see there's knots and things here that I filled with um, clear epoxy. There's some here. But I'm really pleased with how this wood turned out. It's really beautiful. And, um, you know, a lot of these pieces are from the same logs. If you spend some time, you can see that there's the same grain from the different pieces. Uh, just really beautiful figuring. This isn't even uh, sealed or finished. This grain really pops once it is. And so here is the actual speaker I've been working on and, and to the point it's at. Now this is the side with the passive radiator. So I didn't waste any of the wood in here because that's just gonna be cut out. So the passive 12, uh, there'll be a 10 inch NRX uh, passive radiator here. And then I found this beautiful quarter sawn oak veneer. And so I veneered some Baltic birch with that. And then I put in solid oak um, side pieces. And so the same, same on the side of the panel. So you don't see the Baltic birch. You won't see any plywood on this build. And this is the inside where it's at so far. And this is, this is the shelf brace. The passive radiator will sit in here. And then the waveguide and then the eight inch NRX woofer. And this will be the air volume. And there'll be some more bracing inside here before it's all said and done. Um, so I'm really excited about how these are coming out. <clears throat> I'll use this, a similar edge treatment, the uh, thumbnail tabletop bit that I used on the Helios. 
And so these will have the same basic look um, and uh, you know shape as the Helios speaker, but these drivers are much more affordable. And, and so Jeff and I actually wanna offer this as a kit so that you guys can build it. And we're even gonna be working on a flat pack to make it even easier. Um, so I know, you know, that, that we're all still working on that, but our goal right now is to get this speaker done and, um, uh, really show you guys how great the, the, the cheaper format is. And, um, of course, just another fun build, uh, to follow along with and a, an awesome collaboration as always. Um, once the speaker's done, then Jeff and I will work on the crossover. I'll do all the measurements and I'll send them to him and, uh, you know, like we always do. So I want to show you guys the drivers because that's always cool. So we have the uh, eight inch SB23 NBAC S45-8 uh, woofer. And this is the, these are the 10 inch NRX passive radiator. But unlike the one that's in their catalog, this one has much less weight. It's about a third of the weight, which will allow Jeff and I to and play a little bit more with the alignments um, and not uh, kind of be stuck with the really low tuning alignments that the Helios did. The Helios woofer, um, it worked well with that, which it really extended uh, the low end response and then allowed it to roll off at a, a 12 dB per octave instead of a 24 dB per octave. So we're gonna do something similar, but the, the smaller eight inch driver is not gonna benefit as much from like a 17 Hertz tuning frequency. So this gives us the option to do a, a higher one, but give the same, the same basic performance that the, the Helios had as well. Uh, so let's, uh, let's open some of these up. All right, well, let's start with the, the passive since it's already open. So this path is, Passive was built custom for Jeff and I, uh, thanks to Bo at SB. And uh, if you can compare, I mean, they're the same passive radiator, except this bottom plate here is much thinner and lighter. So there's still a, a provision here to add weight if we want to, but this, the, the mass on this is about 180 grams versus like 400 or 450 for the standard one. Um, Really beautiful driver, beautiful Castleman frame. I really like how SB does the dished frame. When you flush mount this, it just gives a really nice dimension to the driver, um, how it sits in the cabinet. It's just, it's very beautiful and luxurious compared to a lot of drivers. Um, not much else to say, excellent quality, you know, rubber surround, um, nice spider on it. It's a a great passive, but the other cool thing is it matches exactly the look of the uh, NRX woofers. So it's a very consistent look. Uh, this will be available from SB um, as a production model in the future. All right. So now for the eight inch uh, NBAC woofer. So this is a similar driver to the the eight inch that Jeff and I used in the Ceramicos, uh, but it has a different cone. Um, so this is an aluminum cone and it has these uh, embossed areas which help shape the breakup character of the, of the cone. Uh, similar frame to the passive, that dished, beautiful dished cast aluminum frame, rubber surround, generous vent. Um, so this driver can stay cool and avoid power compression. Um, just a really beautiful driver. I like drivers that do the terminals on each side. Um, it, it's uh, to me. I like I like the way they hook up, and you know, theoretically speaking, it puts the the leads on opposing sides. So if there's any force generated by those leads, they offset each other. Um, 
And like, like the Helios, we'll be doing a lower crossover, you know, in the thousand hertz range, thanks to the waveguide, uh, we'll enable that. And um, Jeff's already done some modeling on all these drivers working together and they, they look really good together. So All right, and then the tweeter, the tweeter we're using is the SB29 SDAC. So for the money, this is an amazing tweeter. It's an SB29 mil tweeter. Um, and uh, the distortion performance, it can cross low. Um, it sounds great, it's detailed. Uh, and so here's the, here's the tweeter with the faceplate removed. So normally it comes like that. So if you take the screws out, that comes right off. And here is the waveguide. So this is modeled off of the SB waveguide uh, from the Helios, but it's, it has some changes to allow it to work with the SB29 uh, tweeter. And so basically the, the tweeter sits like that, and then this bracket goes on There'll be some bolts that connect it and that clamp it in place. And this is a, a waveguide I've had manufactured. It's a solid billet aluminum and it has a beautiful um, hard anodized finish. This is a bright anodizing finish. Um, so I've done some prelim preliminary measurements with the tweeter and this waveguide and they look very good. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the gist of the project. Here's the where the speaker's at. So I'll be putting on the second side here, and then I'll cut driver holes, and I'm going to add some more bracing once all the panels are on, because a lot of the bracing has to kind of work its way around the passive radiator, and it's easy to do once that's in place, and I can just do that through the eight-inch driver cutout. Um, you guys probably noticed I like doing cool little uh, binding post plates, and so this will be no difference. Th this is the lumber that I cut and glued together, and so I'll be making two round terminal plates for the binding posts that go on the back, and that's what this piece is for. So again, you can see I've filled with epoxy some of the cutout areas. So. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you for following along. I always love your guys' comments, your encouragements, your enthusiasm, and um, you know your guys' camaraderie, because building speakers by myself would be pretty boring. So it's really fun uh, having you guys to follow along and, and talk to this stuff about. So thanks again, and here's to 2020. Here's to some great speaker projects. Uh, stay tuned on the Helios Common Man. Thanks, guys.